Did you know it was reality based <laughs> um, from the get go? I I did because I had it on on the very front of the script, but um, I'd never heard of Johnny Frank Garrett, so. Um, <clears throat> So I watched um, a documentary. There's a documentary called The Last Word, which is credited at the very front of the film by a, an, a, 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 um, a lawyer called Jesse, uh, Jesse Quackenbush, who's a practicing lawyer in, in um, Texas. He's very much a champion of um, um, kind of anti-death penalty. And um, so I found that um, documentary, watched it, and so it's quite an amazing story. It's, it's very much you know, um, making of a murder. You know, Kind of thing, really, and there was a lot of, a lot of things in, in his trial which are just kind of crazily um, wrong and unfair and stuff. So, um, so as, as soon as I, I read it, I kind of knew it. Yeah. Well, give them a quick um, sp spoiler-free mm. synopsis of the film. Well, it's it's about so well basically, in, um, it's initially set in 1968-69 in Amarillo, Texas, and um, on Halloween, a non 76-year-old nun called Sister Tadea Benz was murdered and raped in her bedroom in her convent. Um, the police could not find the person who did it. They, they had a few suspects, but the alibis, you know, they had alibis and things didn't work, work out. So, so they ended up arresting after having failed to find anyone. This, this young boy called Johnny Frank Garrett, he was, I think he just turned 17 at the time. He was kind of very much from the wrong side of the tracks, from a, a poor family. You know, had a, a mom and sisters, but you know, had had, her, had his dad wasn't was never around. He'd been in trouble with the police before. Um, was generally considered to be not not the brightest kid on the block. Um, and yeah, they arrested him, tried him, sentenced him. Um, Ten years later, he was um, executed for this crime that he always maintained his innocence for. Um, and on the night of his Death, he wrote a curse letter and he basically said, Dear society, you know, you have not asked me uh, really if I'm guilty. I'm not guilty. I've always pleaded not guilty, but I'm, you, you, you don't care. You put me to my death. Um, and I, I've kind of made peace with that um, because I'm going to meet God, my maker, but um, I'm putting a curse on you as, as a kind of revenge. And not only on you, but on, on not only on the jurors and the people involved in my trial, but also your family. Your, your sons, your daughters, your husbands, your wives, and whenever you, anyone of you die, that will be me. And, and so thereafter, um, people in the community of Amarillo mysteriously started dying. So the fact that some of these people died in reality, mm. did that affect the way that you develop what yeah. goes on the screen? Well, well the, the, the producers were very keen not to, you know, to, to kind of push it really beyond the, the bounds of what was acceptable. Um, because there are, you know, I mean, for example, the, the district attorney, um, his guy called Danny Hill, he, he ended up committed, committing suicide. Um, and his 14-year-old daughter um, committed suicide about a, a year after he did. Um, and and we, we, were, we were considering putting her death in the film. But in, in the end, we, we just felt whether, whether, and the producers felt especially that that was just kind of pushing pushing it too far in terms of what was really relevant, um, and and of course her family and mother, sisters are still alive. Um, so that, there's one death which which we pushed in in a kind of more Hollywood kind of you know heightened reality, but 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 actually all the others which you see are all 100% real. So do you believe in the supernatural? I mean personally, you know, looking at the Johnny Frank Garrett situation. And, and having done research and um, about everything that went on, to me it felt like there was more this collective case of, of kind of consciousness uh, of, of guilt, uh, kind of collective consciousness of guilt, that, that the community at some point realised that actually what they had done was wrong, and 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 and, the, and actually interestingly, a lot of the jurors who, who died more um, slower deaths died of cancer. A lot of people involved died of cancer, and of course. You could say that you know that's that's life, but um, I, I just I just feel that there's there's something within these people that made them just you know turn inside themselves and, and realize that they put an innocent kid basically to death. Flashing back to the beginning of the film, mm. um, there's a jury member that compares Johnny Frank Garrett to Charles Manson. Yeah, and then it's the male lead character, the one that's against them says, you can't do that, you can't compare him mm -hmm. with Charles Manson. 
but I found it most amusing that then like you ended up, it became the personification visually of Charles yeah, Mansion. Was yeah, that intentional? Yeah. Um, well, <clears throat> we took the visuals from actual real life and, and um, you know, we were really, I think, very fortunate in casting to find this guy, Devin Bonnet, who, who, um, who if, if, you, if you look at photos of, of the real Johnny Frank Garrett and of Devin, you know, when Devin's playing this character, it's, it's amazing how similar he looks. And, and actually, when, when the, the sisters watched the film, one of them, I think, said, you know, she just burst into tears because for the first time that that was like her seeing her brother, you know, 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Um, so, so we, we, you know, we based all that stuff on, on actual real photos. So the, the, his look at the very end was, was, I think we found a photo quite close to his death. And, and, and in it, he'd, he'd gone from this, you know, quite lanky, quite, quite pretty in a way at times, you know, quite handsome, again, 16, 17 year old kids to this just like slightly more fried, I don't care kind of character, which I guess, you know, it's 10, 10 years in prison. We'll do um, that. We'll do that when when you know that you're probably going to die at the end of it. So um so yeah so so making him look like like how he looked in the photos was absolutely you know what we did, but the fact that he looked like Manson was was yeah was just uncanny really. <laughs>